Joining us right now from the Tampa Bay Times, who was kind enough to call into the show all season long. Now that the season is over, I guess this is kind of an exit interview in a way. <laughs> but we always like to chat with you, Rick Stroud. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Now, do I get the physical as well? Or <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I need to hear you see your insurance card. Um, you know, I'll hang up and listen. Uh, no. Um, so uh, what? Uh, what's the first blush reaction to what happened yesterday in Tampa, Rick? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, listen, I, I don't know how far this team would have gone beyond, on, beyond Sunday had they won that remarkable comeback. And, and, and if they'd have pulled it off, I think we'd be talking about a Rams collapse more than Tom Brady's comeback. But – um, you know, I, it's, it's a disappointing, right. When you, when you don't have the confetti fall on your head, when you have a guy like Tom Brady, the finality of an NFL season, as Bruce Arians correctly said is, 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 you know, not good. Uh, and you know, now I think there really is some uncertainty about Brady and, and his future. And that doesn't mean I would be surprised if a couple weeks from now he says, yeah, baby, let's go, let's, you know, let's get this band back together or whatever. Um, but at least for the first time, you know, when he extended his contract back in March, it, there, there didn't seem to be any question that he was, he was down until he's 45, you know, I'm going to play to on 45, maybe I can play to on 50. Um, and now, you know, you don't hear that from him. And I think there's some people really even at, at uh, the bucks that, that aren't sure what he's going to do, but they're certainly going to give him all the space he needs. And then, you know, maybe there's some questions they need to answer with respect to what does this team look like next year? I mean, they, you know, 11 out of the 22 guys that started the game yesterday are going to be free agents. And it's not going to be the same as it was a year ago when they wanted to run it back. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll get some answers probably here um, sooner than later because they need to know by the time they get to free agency for certain. Um, but there is, there is, you know, a lot of questions about about the Bucks and, and and what it'll look like a year from now. What do you know right now, if anything, about what Brady's decision making will be formulated or how it's formulated at all, Rick? Well, what I was told um, when he got here is that you know two two big things um, with him are are the most important. One is his health, um, and by all accounts, he got out of this season now, a year ago. He played with a torn MCL, as we know, but he got out of this season feeling pretty good. I mean, he took some hits in some games against the Saints and others, um, but it's remarkable how he's kept himself in shape. Certainly, you watch that throw, the 55-yard bomb to Mike Evans, there's nothing wrong at all with his arm strength. Uh, he can still spin it. And, you know, that said, uh, you know, they got two offensive linemen that are free agents this year. You know, you've got to you've got to secure all that up. But if he feels good, that's the first question. The second one is, you know, his family and, you know, Tom Brady works really hard at being a great dad and a great husband. And, you know, he wants to be an all pro at that too. Um, you know, he's got a 14 year old son that lives in New York, um, you know, and two kids obviously here and Giselle and every year she asks them, have you had enough? And I just, I believe that when he, when he signed the extension, even though it wasn't binding, obviously, that there had to at least been a discussion, right? That, you know, look, I'm going to do this. So you're not surprised when you read about it. I'd like to play to 145. Now, what could change that? Anything, right? I mean, his kids are getting older. They're involved in sports of their own. Um, you know, certainly he has enough to do off the field with all his businesses and the Brady clothing line, which, by the way, is at Nordstrom's right here in Tampa. It looks really nice. I uh, like doing that stuff. Um, shameless plug. But, you know, it, it's it's anybody's guess, right? But he just enjoys it so much. It, but you know, I don't have any question that he he will play – and, and, and would play if but the pull that he feels is greater, the tug greater a little bit every year with his family. And these have been two magical years for him, I think, and for the Bucks, obviously. It didn't end with both Super Bowls, but if you take just the combined success they've had, I mean, aside from going 1-7 and seven against the Rams and the Saints, <laughs> there's a two, they're like 29-3 and three or 28-3 and three against everybody else. So, um you know, that's a long-winded answer saying, I don't think anybody knows, but there is genuine concern, or at least, um, you know, the question is there as to whether he'll be back next season or not. And that that question still exists at the Bucks right now. Well, I guess the fact that Rick Stroud, Tampa Bay Times here on the Rich Eisen Show, I guess the fact that you did not mention roster as a concern 
for Brady is a good thing, obviously. Um, and uh, on that front, uh, I guess the question is, do you think part of him, this may be another reason why he would want to come back, is that if not for the injuries and then one of his crucial receivers strip sacking himself uh, in New Jersey, um, that he would still be playing today, that he sits there and he thinks about that. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, I, th- I think that um, roster is – I didn't mention it, but that's on me. Um, I-, I think the roster is important, obviously, and especially when two of your offensive linemen, including the Pro Bowl center, is a free agent, right? Now, it's a chicken and the egg, right? You can get a heck of a lot of guys back to come and play with Tom Brady if they know he's going to be the quarterback, you know? So if he's waiting for them to sign or something, well, that's not going to happen until after the start of free agency, which is too late anyway. Um, but they're not in the salary cap situation that say the Packers are, um, they're going to have some money. They're, there's a lot of free agents. So a lot of those contracts will drop off. Obviously they're about middle of the pack with respect to, to salary cap space. They have kicked some, you know, the can down the road to, to get everybody back a year ago. So it won't be like, you know, all 22 are coming back. But you also have the draft, and you have free agency, and, and, and he's the biggest draw in free agency. So I think he would be confident that Jason Light and Bruce would do everything they could to put the best team around them. That would include Chris Godwin, right, if you franchised him again or brought him back. That would probably include um, you know, one of your offensive linemen or both. That would include a Carlton Davis and, and you know, some of the key elements of their team. So there's enough talent and still a young core on this team that he can win with, especially in this division. Um, but can you win it all? And, and I think Tom thinks he can win it all with anybody, you know, and, you know, I think Gronk would come back if Tom comes back. I think that those two are somehow related in my mind. So um, I don't, he's not, he's not scared of anyone. We know that, but I think it is, I think it is still, he would want to know what the plan is and, you know, they'd have to give him some assurances. And, and I think they would do this, that they will mortgage, any future move any mountain to make sure that Tom Brady's their quarterback if he wants to play because business is good here in Tampa Bay right now folks let me let me assure you that they're relevant they've been to a Super Bowl they won 14 games this year they're very happy about what Tom Brady has brought them and they'd like to keep they'd like to keep this going yeah first division since the aughts as well I mean so yeah yeah, uh, obviously Things are things are going well there. Rick Stroud here on the Rich Eisen show. I, I noticed you said business is good and not booming, um, <laughs> you know. And I am I am I guess mandated to linger here a little bit because you're already hearing the conversation that 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 what was missing in a way um, clearly you know a quick game would have been required um, yesterday the way that that Brady was getting hit and then more targets um, with, with playmakers that you'd have to be concerned about, certainly if you've got Jalen Ramsey with uh, one side of the field or, or however they were playing it. Uh, and today, um, my, uh, our friend Brandon Marshall does have an interview out with um, Antonio Brown where he said that Arians never wanted him there and was very negative about his presence there and so on and so forth. And I know that there's a large grain and there's a lot of salt. But do you think... Like what? What did happen? Any any more ideas in the last two three weeks about what did happen with Antonio Brown? And if he was there yesterday, there would have been a different result. Rick, um, there's no question. Antonio Brown makes him a better football team, and not by a little, but probably by a lot. Um, he's just that kind of player. You know, he missed all those weeks. Came back against uh, what was it, Carolina? I think had ten catches for over a hundred yards, and and you know the talent is there. Talent's never been the issue. Um, you know, I guess it's my fault for writing about the fake vaccination cards and that led to the suspension and then maybe he wasn't going to get enough money and then he wanted his bonuses guaranteed. So I'll take the fall on that one. But at the end of the day, um, Antonio Brown was a ticking time bomb. Um, you know, it was a, it was a matter of when, not if. And, you know, they got a Super Bowl out of him. They got eight games. He even caught a touchdown there. They brought him back. That was what they chose to do. And it wound up, you know, in, in the, the, the show that was, you know, MetLife Stadium with the stripping to the waist. So um, I don't know that you, you could have predicted it would go down like that so publicly and so, so bitterly. But, yeah, could they have been a better team with Antonio? I think that's why he was here. I think Tom knew that. Um, I think Tom genuinely cares about all his teammates, including Antonio. I don't think it was just about winning. 
but that guy's a next level type dude. And that that's what Tom Brady wants around him because his football IQ is so high um, that he just knows how to make himself available. And when he gets the ball in his hands, the guy can make unbelievable things happen. But, you know, the sport is more, more than just talent. As we know, it's a team sport. And there was not a bigger me guy in the locker room, you know, than Antonio Brown. And, and that's, if you listen to Bruce Arians and other people that were in the locker room at halftime up there in New York, that's all he was talking about was his touches and his, you know, targets and so on and so forth. So that necessarily, you know, doesn't doesn't make you uh, a winner. But if you're asking me would they have won the game, I don't know if they win the game. The game certainly goes a little bit better. But I think the bigger factor was they were just a beat-up football team. And, and once it once it got to the offensive line level, even the guys coming in like Josh Wells, couldn't hold up especially against a really good defensive line and even having said all that they still clawed back in and tied the game Unreal. and and but for just a horrendous call that i can't explain or todd Bowles probably will have to explain um they may win that game so um yeah i mean one guy does he change the whole thing maybe but i, I it's just hard to hard to know then last one for you is what about the staff, right? Um, Arians coming back and what's his future and then the rest of the staff um, being intact coming back. What do you think? Well, I mean, they've got two guys that have had head coaching interviews. And, um, you know, from what I hear, I think Bowles has a shot. I don't know if it's in Jacksonville. That would seem the natural place for me. Uh, quarterback with a young quarterback like Trevor Lawrence, ties to the area, all of that. I think for Todd Bowles, I think he's interviewing teams as much as they would interview him. He's been down the road with the New York Jets. He knows what he has to have to win. He's not going to go to a situation where that doesn't exist. I don't think he has a burning desire just to take any job, although you know, if he was offered one, he'd have to consider it. Um, they're ready to move on if they have to on offense. Uh, Bruce Arians said today he would go back to calling plays, which wow. is a surprise. That is a surprise. Um, and I think he would still use his staff to do most of the scripts and some of the heavy lifting during the week. Um, I know he's trying to groom Thad Lewis, who's a assistant receivers coach that was a quarterback at Duke and played in four or five or six different organizations. He's really high on him, but he might not think he's quite ready yet. And I think, you know, in Bruce saying that, that seemed like a little message to Tom Brady to me that, hey, if we lose Byron, and Tom does a lot of game planning, let's be honest, but if he loses Byron, that, hey, you can work with me. I'll work with you. You get the big guy. You know, everything will be fine. So that's kind of interesting, I thought. Always interesting talking to you, Rick Stroud. Thanks for the call. Let's do this down the line. So much to talk about with the uh, now dethroned, if you will, world champs. Much appreciated. Thank you for the, the whole year and, uh, and over the next couple of weeks when you uh, answer our call. Thank you. Anytime, Rich. Dethroned. I that sounds so bad. I mean, I don't know. If I'm it a happened. Prone beat writer. No, you're not. You're not. You're welcome back anytime. <laughs> you passed the physical. We got. We got everything back. So. Uh, okay. Good. Glad I'm good. All right. Thanks, Rich. We'll see. Anytime, buddy. Keep your playbook. We'll, we'll. We'll see you soon. There you go. That's Rick Stroud, everyone. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.